going, everybody? Welcome back to a very special and exciting, exciting, it was special. Yeah. Well, I, I think you guys are all excited because finally Tino, Tino made it in. He uh, finally, we finally got the Tino exclusive. Distance makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, we appreciate him coming on. Uh, we know it wasn't easy for him. We're glad that he prioritizes mental health after AFR, but uh, also thankful that he decided to uh, come here and uh, be vulnerable. Be vulnerable and share uh, some details about uh, what went down. So uh, we won't want to give too much away. What do you guys think of Tino now? Do you think of Tino differently? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of him before? The, all, the finale he, AFR episode was not kind to him. Yeah. And now, do you want to give anything away? I just think if um, you felt like he was not holding himself accountable during AFR, this will be a very different tone and like content level. I and agree. like, yeah. I think there's a very different level of accountability that is displayed in this. And interview. walking through like the exact situation and the context and all that yeah. good stuff yeah. is important. Interesting. Yeah. I would agree. It's very Tino heavy this episode. So, Ultra quick to throw in a little bit of pop culture. Selena Gomez and Haley Bieber are in their first photo together. This is huge. I saw that today. Do you? Yeah. How much do you know about the background? I'm familiar. Yeah, there's been an ongoing feud for some time. It seems I what I couldn't tell is is this a fan feud that's gotten out of control or or have these two kind of cryptically played along at their convenience? As an outsider's point of view, that was the question I had. I mean, it's just, it's like Selena and Justin were on again, off again for the longest time. And then a matter of months later, he's walking down the aisle with Haley. So um, it's like, when you, I mean, yeah. yeah, but that's not Haley's fault. No, I, I completely agree. But it's like you're set, like the two of them were kind of set up for failure in that way. Well, yeah, the, and the on and on and on, on again, off again. I don't think very highly of those relationships. I've been in those relationships. They, there's a reason why they're off again often. I do also think now that we've seen them have a success, Justin and Haley have a successful marriage, it's a little bit different in terms of the vitriol that might have been there at the beginning has probably mm -hmm. subsided when you're like, OK, well, it seems like there's a really good chance like they're each other's person. What do you think uh, compelled this photograph to finally be taken? Because was it at a she just went on Call Her Daddy and we, they were she was asked about the Selena of it all. Who did someone post it or was it like a pop photo? No, it was. A, yeah, it was taken like by uh, the photographer is named. The win for them. Uh, Tyrell Hampton. Uh, Good and job, Tyrell. Good Thank job, Tyrell. You. What a win. <laughs> and it was at the 2022 Academy Museum Gala in Los Angeles. Very star-studded event. Had all the key players there. That was not. You know, <laughs> not a key player. <laughs> but that's the breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> you did not get an invite. Oh, like was this staged? Why was the photo taken? Oh, why are they oh taking in terms the of like why now? Mm -hmm. I do think I to to your original point of like how much of this is an actual feud, how much of this is just like extreme fans making a lot of noise on the internet. I think maybe in Haley's interview where she mentioned that she does get a lot of hate, like you know, she and she didn't bl assign blame to Selena. She very much spoke about like kind of the fandom surrounding it, and so I wonder if that was a catalyst for being like, hey. Olive Branch. Yeah, like we don't have an if issue they with have, each if other. If they have peace, then maybe the fans will stop coming. Well, exactly. Her. Like once, yeah. I feel like they should have done this sooner. Yeah. Like they had the power. I, th I think, well, I wonder if they sort of went the route of like, oh, we're not going to talk about it. You know, I feel like a big PR strategy is to just move on. People will forget about it but and then just kind of double down. Have, and maybe it's just fans, but haven't haven't one, at least one of them or both of them or been at least accused of doing passive aggressive critiques of each other through social media or no? Or is that just fans overreacting and kind of there was, guessing? I covered this for a news story once, but it was like Selena did like a whole TikTok of a makeup routine with her like rare beauty line. And, peop and right before that, Haley had posted a makeup line and Selena did it very like satirically and was being like very dramatic. And people were like, oh, my God, she's mocking Haley. And I was nah, like, do you know reach. how many yeah. millions of like get ready with me videos there yeah. are on TikTok? Like people are reaching. That's a reach. Yeah. So mostly well, good, fluff. Good for them. I'm glad uh, they can bury the hatchet if there was a hatchet to bury. His name is Justin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, the other quick thing is speaking of reunions, Robert Kraft, owner of the Patriots, oh. um, had a surprise wedding. Did he have massage therapists there? 
That's the question. (laughs) Uh, He married Dr. (laughs) Dana Blumberg. And I'm just curious what your take on the whole surprise wedding move is. Was it really a surprise? That looks like a lot of people. It was a surprise wedding? So they invited people to an event. People didn't know it was a wedding. And then they found out at the event it was a wedding. It's like if anyone's seen the show Girls. Yes. So what do you think about ambushing? I guess it's an ambush wedding. Ambushing your guests? Yeah. Because I'm assuming he didn't ambush his bride. No. (laughs) No, she was wearing white. (laughs) I think Dana was aware. Fuck it. Why yeah, not? As long as if you, you know and like the right people know for it to be a good event, why not? Yeah, as long as like the fake event matched the amount of time that the real event's going to take. <laughs> yeah. And most weddings don't have like the ceremonies are pretty quick. I'm sure it was fun. Full yeah. mass with communion. <laughs> but my thing is like, what if somebody didn't go to the event? You know, they were kind of like so so on whether or not they should rally and pull through and, and then overcome logistical challenges or they were like, nah, it's whatever. There's going to be another whatever like dinner. And then it's like, nope, that was the wedding. Well, that's on I you like for that's throwing the, the surprise. That's on Rob. That's on Bobby. It's on Bobbert. Yeah. I don't know. Next time Nick invites us to an event, we just have to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of you missed my party. One of you missed Natalie. So next time. God. Got to make the effort. Oh, we could have missed it. One of it. you misses the wedding. Fired. Never again. Yeah. Fired. <laughs> but also, <laughs> hey, that's a headline. There. I have a signed copy of Don't Text Your Ex Happy Birthday. Yeah, and it says, Dear uh, Allie, I will never fire you. Yeah. So I'll take that to a court of law any day. What would you write in my <laughs> signed copy of Don't Text Your Ex Happy Birthday? I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Okay. But I can't write I'll never fire you because that's that was Allie's special <laughs> note. <laughs> so guess you'll have to keep worrying. <laughs> Tino, everybody. <laughs> Let me think about it. Uh, all right. Before we get to Tino, uh, for um, all the people tuning in to listen to Tino, I have a book that came out last week. It is a USA Today bestseller. Ha ha ha. That's, I don't know why I said ha ha ha. That was awkward of me. To all of your haters. Uh, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Was that a projection? Uh, yeah. Listen, I'm really proud of uh, how everyone's been receiving it, the reviews, the comments uh, for anyone who's out there dating or in relationships or struggling with all the bolster that comes with relationships. It's a book about communication. It's a a good book about feeling more confident in your choices so that you feel uh, less confused and more empowered with dating in all aspects of relationships. I tell some anecdotal stories about my my life, my friends, uh, people from the show as well. It's a really easy read. Someone just wrote today, one of of the great compliments I received is that they have ADHD and it was hard for them to put down and they thought it was a very easy read. So if you're a non-reader like me or uh, this other wonderful person, check us out, vilefiles.com. You can get the audio book. If you're in uh, the UK, Australia, or Canada, go to vilefiles.com. There's links for that. Also, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. And if you want to support indie bookstores, those are all links that are available at vilefiles.com. Don't forget to send questions for Ask Nick. If uh, you haven't listened to the update, up, a special update episode that we dropped last Friday, check it out for our updates for Ask Nick and texting office hours. I think that's it. All right. Tino, everybody. You need some luggage? I do. Everybody has baggage. Everyone we has talk baggage. about that a lot on yeah. this show. And you want to have the right kind of baggage. Yeah. You want to look good when you're toting yeah. that around. You want people to be like, is that a way baggage? <sighs> Not the ba- It's the baggage you want to bring into a relationship. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So fun fact about my away suitcase. The other week I was flying home for my sister's wedding. My flight boarded at 756 and I pulled up to LAX at 754. Um, it was a little bit of a cramp situation, but you know what just glided me right through security into the wrong terminal, which resulted in me having to run the opposite direction? Oh, wait. My suitcase. Yeah, it runs mm-hmm. with you. It's got 360 spin wheels. It's great. You can put also like bags on top of it. It's, yeah. it's, it's really convenient. I put my dog on top of it. It looks, uh, it looks sexy. They got all different uh, types of suitcases. Also, it lasts forever. Mine, I've had it for a couple of years. It looks brand new. All the beatings that come with how the airport treats your bag away has you covered. It's amazing what you can fit in it. Uh, Away offers a range of suitcases, bags, and other travel essentials made of different materials like uh, polycarbonate and aluminum in a variety of colors and sizes. So whatever you are packing and wherever you're going, Away has luggage that will help you make your trip more seamless. Uh, You get a 100-day free trial on everything Away makes. Uh, Take the product on the road, live with it, travel with it, get lost with it. And if you don't want to keep it, you can return it as long as it's not personalized for a full refund during the uh, no if ends or buts uh, period of time. So start your 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup of travel essentials, including their best-selling suitcases and bags at awaytravel.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's awaytravel.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Tino, welcome. Thanks for having me, Nick. How are you? How's it hard? Every, every day gets 
gets better. Okay. Uh, the healing process is uh, going to be a long one for me. I know we were supposed to do this interview uh, a couple weeks ago, but um, obviously AFR happened and there were lots of, of mixed reviews about it. Yeah. And we know that you were kind of taking care of your mental health and we appreciate that. So one, I just want to thank you for taking the time to, to come here. I know it's not always easy to uh, talk about this topic. Yeah. It's I mean, like, how easy. are you doing? And I guess, you know, I know it seemed like AFR, you know, was uh, a lot. Where's your heart at now? How's your mental health? Where, where How would you say you're doing? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, I just try to keep uh, keep working on it. I mean, like the whole having a psychologist thing, and I've been seeing him like twice a week. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Uh, you know, I I wanted somebody if they, you know, if I really went south or something, they could they could make moves that some uh, therapists can't because they're social workers and they can't like prescribe anything. But I I feel like I've made like a lot of really good progress in it. Honestly, I probably am like 15 years overdue to start this kind of process. So. I feel like every time I'm in a therapy session, we're limited to 45 minutes and she's like, it's like origami. It's not just unfolding like a couple, you know, sheets. It's how you know, long, it's deep. how long have you been, uh, seeing the psychologist? So the, the show did set me up with one for, uh, the duration of the show. And then I moved on to this one because she was highly recommended in LA okay. and she has been absolutely phenomenal, very available, helps out a lot. Like with my work schedule, I can't just you know, I can't, I can't walk off a construction site, go have a good cry and come back with swollen eyes. So, um, you know, she's been great. She's been seeing me a lot after hours and that's been that's really awesome, helpful. man. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for you for, for doing that. Did you start seeing her before, was it before AFR or, or like in the timeline of you and Rachel, uh, breaking up when, when did you, when did you start working on things? So Rachel and I broke up about, a month before the show ended so okay. i stayed with the show one and you know she was phenomenal she was a great listener and it just it you know i i always will associate and i told her this like i'm always going to associate her with the kind of traumatic experience so i i just felt like it'd be better if i moved on to it makes sense somebody else no so. we we love that we talk about that all the time you know therapy or getting a therapist like having someone that wor works for you that you connect with is, is as important as any part of, of therapy there's a lot of good therapists there's bad therapists there's you know it's like it's kind of like dating you know you got to find someone you feel safe and, and compatible with so we're happy that it seems like you found someone that uh, you feel comfortable with. So good for you. Couldn't say enough nice things about it. Well, what I'd like to do is, again, it, AFR was a big mess. I'd love to talk a little bit about that. I'd love to, uh, I think a lot of people were left with some unanswered questions. I mean, the takeaway that, you know, just so you know, just full transparency conversations we've had about, you know, you while recapping it. And I think the overall sentiment, at least from the people we've talked to or our audience mostly is, no one agrees with with cheating. We have some uh, strong opinions about the the uh, low character moment that is uh, infidelity or cheating. That's not up for debate. But we also this is a show. Timelines uh, are things that we're interested in, and I'd love to like just walk through kind of what happened and and kind of you know see if we can better understand this relationship and how it all went and if if, if that's okay with you. Yeah, I mean, I I think pretty much. Uh we can talk about most anything at this point. Obviously, okay. there are things that, you know, transpired between me and Rachel that, as, sure. as we've both said, are deeply personal and we're not going to touch it. Whatever those, you want to feel comfortable. Yeah, whatever yeah. you feel comfortable. Yeah. It's, I think we, we can very easily um, go through the timeline without touching any of that. And just, you know, so I know you guys haven't talked to me before. Like, I'm definitely not on Team Cheater. Like, I, I do not stand by what I did at all. It was not cool. It wasn't fair to Rachel. And it haunts me daily still. Like it's just it. It's something I'm ashamed of, and certainly like wish it. I could have done it differently, like a million times over. It, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's not easy to say. We really appreciate you saying that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's you sound you sound sincere, at least from where I'm sitting. I guess. What is your thought? I guess on uh, you know, there's that a common phrase: once a cheater, always a cheater. What are your as as someone who just says you're not on team cheater, you have regret. How do you process that that feeling or what insecurities do you have around that question that gets commonly answered when people make that mistake? Well, I don't, you know, I mean, I'm certainly going to 
you know, strive the rest of my life to prove that is not the case, at least for me. My friends, if they said, oh, you know, like my significant other cheated on me, like more often than not, I'd say, okay, you guys probably, are, you know, you should think about breaking up with them. Yeah. And now, I mean, like, I, I guess I have like a little, like, I don't really think I deviate too far from that. That's certainly how I was before I made the mistake. And I think that's probably true, like nine times out of 10. I mean, I know some people who have worked through this similar um, issue and they have a beautiful relationship and they're stronger than ever. And I, you know, like I, I commend them for having the strength to get through that. But more often than not, che cheating is a deal breaker. I, I'm pretty sure it would be for me. So, you know, it's, I guess my duty now to like, like I was saying with my therapist, like I'm trying to go through and unfold and figure out why my, you know, insecurities, my ego could just take over my actions like that and just kind of lead me down this path to like go to rock bottom and dig a 10 foot hole beyond that and then choose my actions from that. Yeah. I and mean, it was the lowest thing I could have done in relationship terms too, Rachel, and that wasn't fair to her at all. I'd love to kind of go back to, I guess, uh, let's start, if we could, when you and Rachel got engaged. And I'd love to kind of understand the timeline between what I'm guessing at that moment felt like a really happy moment, and then from where, how things kind of unfolded to where how we got to AFR. So, I mean, when you got engaged, I guess, you know, I, this is a question probably you should just ask, like, what were you thinking? Like what, you know, bachelor people who get engaged, their feelings of at engagement can range anywhere from like, holy shit, like, oh, like, I guess, like this is a leap of faith. But like, we'll see to like other people are just like, fuck it. I, I know this is crazy, but I'm, I'm all in. Where would you range? How did you see yourself in, in that kind of spectrum of, 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 of where your heart was at when you and Rachel got engaged? I had no doubt. I was in camp, fuck it, this is it. I have the coolest story ever and the coolest girl ever. No doubt in my mind I wanted to do that. For myself, I remember after getting engaged, it's kind of like a deer in headlights situation for the next couple of weeks. How, you know, how was the next few days, like the happy couple weekend that you get to enjoy right after engagement? Uh, what was, I guess, the next month or so like for your relationship? Oh, I mean, it was amazing. Rachel really, really knows how to partner and make them feel really special and valued. And, you know, I, I'm, I think I'm more of like a words of affirmation person. I mean, like she really like made me feel so secure in our relationship and was just everything I could have asked for and more. Of course, the distance was challenging, but we, we found like plenty, like plenty of time to text and talk on the phone. And it was, um, you know, it was great. Like the, the meetups were always like very passionate and we got to learn so much more about each other because we weren't on like a timeline of you can see her for x amount of time and then we're going to pull you away and have you talk about that like it was just nice and it felt so real and it was so fun being with her like what was um i mean i guess before we get into the i mean if you're okay with it i don't know if this is weird for you but what was what were things that you fell in love with rachel like what were why did you why were you in camp fuck it all in so to speak like what, what what was it about rachel and and what did you learn about her through the process that made you think this had the potential of being this kind of crazy amazing story despite the, obviously the challenges that a relationship and bachelor face yeah i mean like it's tough because there were two leads this season so like a lot of people are saying you know like we didn't really get to see their relationship bloom or you know like the time was so limited they only showed certain things but i mean the rachel i saw like just such an amazing caring person and one of the best compliments i think you can ever receive which i still to this day want to give it to rachel because she really shines at this amazingly she is one of if not the best listener i've ever met and she was so attentive and on the show where you know in every aspect we as the contestant side were like pursuing her i always felt like she was going out of her way to make sure i felt valued and seen and you know like really comfortable there and that there was something really special for me there did you i mean like this you know with with all that you know the distance is a challenge after again like you know, with my own experiences, friends I have, uh, there's always, you know, when the time when you get done filming and then that space between it's filming and when it starts airing, did you, how did you guys handle the, the, the stresses that come with a, a relationship that starts in The Bachelor? Like, you know, how did you guys communicate about the potential challenges that every couple faces when they have to watch it back, when they have to start a relationship long distance? How did you guys go about that early on and that did that ever become a challenge? 
So you're you're talking about like the typical issues of like a couple coming out of I, I guess the season. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I yeah, there are I, I guess pretty typical issues with the long distance and not being able to see each other and having to watch things back. And then there might be other challenges that could have been specific to you. Do you guys have any? Like, were there any? I don't. Really I mean, there obviously seems to be. There were. Seems like there were some. No, or maybe there weren't challenges. Well, those came eventually. Every relationship has challenges. But yeah, I mean, like we we just communicated so well in the beginning, and it was like truly amazing. Like in a lot of ways, um, we just we fit the bill of making that situation the best we could for a long time. So like. Kind of a funny example of it was like, there's a time change. She's from Florida and I'm California. She stays up really late and I get up at the crack of dawn. So it actually was like working out perfectly, like with the time change, like we were really hitting our stride and making sure like we were finding time to talk and, you know, show affection to each other. And it, it was like a special thing. I mean, typically like, you know, I, I was trying to be really attentive to like how she feels loved and like you know it, the distance and the secret secretivity i don't know the secrecy keeping it a se secrecy, yeah secrecy yeah. you know those present their own challenges because you can't send like her flowers one day you know just to make sure. sure she feels special that day or appreciated and you know you can't go and post her all over your instagram or do something like that that you know you could just go a little bit beyond just the normal stuff to make her feel like special what changed? Where did we go from what sounds like a nice start and you guys find the time and hitting your stride to what's, you know, like during AFR or that visit on camera, it seemed like you guys were having a, a he said, she said moment of, of about whatever this breakdown was. Like, how do you see it? Where did things take a shift, if, if at all, that resulted in you making this mistake that you now regret or you say you regret? I absolutely regret it. Okay. And I'll say it a million times. I do. It's the biggest mistake of my life. I mean, but there was a lot of things that through like self-reflection, I kind of see like maybe weren't a problem, but I wasn't giving them the attention that they deserve. So like, I think a perfect example is I was seeing like the show's psychologist or therapist for a little bit. And I always said like, oh, you know, like no, nothing, nothing about the show really bothers me. Or like, I, I didn't know what to talk to him about because things were just going so well. It was like, I didn't really put any effort into like really looking deep in and saying like, okay, this is a really unique situation where we met and fell in love. Maybe there are things that like I'm insecure about and my ego is just staying dormant. And I wish I did that. I wish I took like therapy way more seriously before we started having issues because maybe that would have, I mean, I know for a fact that would have helped me find, you know, a healthier vice, a less toxic, you know, outlet for you know when times got hard and every relationship goes through hard things you were feeling some insecurities pop up but kind of ignoring them well so i guess it, it changed when we were like when things started to heat up the promo started when we were coming into the show mm -hmm. and i guess like i really i could not describe it, and you would understand it but like I, I can't describe to anybody how actually hard that is watching back. Like we, we've seen the show or parts of it. Like we kind of knew what we were signing up for as contestants in the sense that mm -hmm. we're going to see a lot of public displays of affection for people that aren't us. Like it's not the Tino and Rachel show. It was you sure. know, Rachel and Gabby the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that took way bigger of a toll on me than I thought it would. And you couple that with, it was, it was feeling a little distant. I think we both had a lot of pressure on ourselves. You you feel like you're under a spotlight. Of course, the leads get a tremendous amount of a, attention that like I personally can't even empathize with because I've never done it. And I'm sure it is so hard on them. I'm sure any lead would ever say that. So it, it just, it, it felt like it was getting a little distant and I was trying to, you know, bring us back to that really affectionate uh, way we were before where I was like feeling really comfortable because watching it back or like just having Instagram at that time, seeing your feed filled with you know, theories or clips of other people was really difficult. But, you know, like looking back on it when she's just getting, she has like a super full plate and I'm like asking for more and kind of like, like, I don't think, like, I really think I could have been like a way more supportive partner for her and kind of like seen through the storm. Like that, that's where I really feel like I let her down and, you know, things were hard. I mean, relationships when emotions get high and me and her are very passionate people, like, you know, like we, we would have talks that would get elevated, but that doesn't give you any excuse to like act out. And I think if I, 
you know, if I could have done it different, I would have really kind of like taken taken the time to really like digest other. So like when, when something would be said, like, I, I really think like I have a bad tendency and this could be like anxious attachment or whatever my therapist, you know, like, and I land on at the, you know, whatever point we do, like, I think sometimes I have like a tendency when something happens or is said, like I think kind of catastrophically. So like my mind goes there and it's hard for, I think anybody to like walk it back and be like, okay, what else could I, what other interpretations could there be here? What positive interpretations could there be? Yeah. And I just was unable to do that. Could you, are, are you able to give like an example of, cause you kind of mentioned, you said you, it sounds like you felt some distance and, mm -hmm. and to, to confirm being the lead bachelorette bachelor, it is super stressful. There's a lot of commitments. I remember the same struggle that I I felt like I was having with Vanessa. I was more in Rachel's camp, right? right. Where it was more like, hey, listen, like I, I can, I can tell you how I actually felt about you, but what you're going to see isn't always going to support that. So like, I'm going to need you to trust me here. But that's something we struggled with. But did that create distance? Did the amount of time in which you guys communicated or talked on the phone, were there, were there periods of which it wasn't as consistent as it was before? Yeah. Um, so like, I mean, again, with, you know, my theorized anxious attachment style, you know, like I was, I was trying to give her space, which like, that's the hardest thing in a relationship for me. Like having that kind of, I don't know what to call it, like that kind of, uh, relationship style. It is, it's really hard, but we were trying to do that um, because I was just trying to get creative and try to like be supportive the w in any way I could because like, you know, obviously I wanted to be with her forever and it just like, it, it felt like the more I was like trying to be like, like attentive, it was more like creating more distance and that, so we were, we were kind of taking some time, like a couple days to like give each other space and I didn't think it was, I, I thought it was pretty productive actually. So if I'm hearing you right, and correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you felt like, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like maybe the pressures of the bachelorette, or for whatever reason, you felt some sort of disconnect that you didn't feel early on, and you were feeling like maybe you you really took that to heart, uh, maybe got yeah, insecure about yeah, it. I was, then, I was feeling really insecure because like it, it felt distant and like she was just busy. I mean, like, I don't think I like it looking back on it. Like, I mean, there was such like a healthier way to handle this kind of stuff. I mean, well, she, how did you do it versus how do you wish you would have done it? Well, so, I mean, obviously I went and made a mistake and did it before that. that. Oh, um, yeah. You know, like I just, I, I tried to take initiative in the sense of like trying to push for a game plan of how we'd get better. Sure. And sometimes you just kind of do have to give them like a little breathing room so they can find their way back home. And I think like me being at times pushy about it, or maybe even just coming off that way, like that really put a lot more strain where do I should have like just been more uh, supportive. Pushy and like you wanting more like quality time or, or just communication. Yeah. I mean, like both. it's a fine, yeah. it's, it's like in a relationship, I think that's what we all struggle with. It's like, what, what do you, what's the line between like, I love that you seem like you're trying to take accountability and reflect in a way, but how do we draw the line between supporting our partner versus, you know, making sure we're getting what we need in the moment, you know, remembering it back, what would you have done differently? How would I you mean, like to have handled that? Like you feeling the way you did versus how you handled it in terms of how you communicated with Rachel about like feeling a little disconnected or insecure? Um, I think I would have probably like leaned more on my therapist to try to kind of unfold why I was like, just my insecurities were spiking so hard. I think a lot of the space stuff really helped. And I honestly, I think at times with our partners, maybe they really do need us to kind of step up and be a friend mm -hmm. at times. And I, I just think like, maybe I should have been more comfortable in that role where I was, you know, like really just feeling like really insecure and just like just self doubting. And it, it was just, it was hurting. I was like, you know, like uh, again, I was thinking like kind of catastrophically. So obviously, like the ideas of like, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Like if this doesn't work out, like I'm going to be the guy who like got engaged and then like it didn't work out within like two months or, you know, I, it just, it really, like, I, I guess my mind just went to like kind of a dark place and that should have been more of like an alarm to me to like go get more help and not, you know, lean on Rachel so much, especially when she had such a hard, you know, role to take on at the time. 
With it being two bachelorettes, and I guess I never thought about this until now, but I mean, we didn't know this at the time, but you must have known that Gabby and Eric were together. Yeah. Did you yeah. did you compare yourself to them at any point, good oh, or bad? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Eric's a great dude. I, I tried to check in a lot with him on his family situation. And him and Gabby at the time when Rachel and I were going through our struggles were doing so amazing. Like they really were. And when when you see that and you're you're feeling insecure like that kind of amplifies it a little bit you know like me and eric talked pretty regularly he kind of was checking in like hey how are everything how's everything going and it just like i like, i remember i didn't even really want to talk to him about it because i didn't want to admit like the vote like i didn't want to get vulnerable with anybody about like how i was feeling at the time and i mean just bottling it in led to yeah kind of did did you in. communicate with rachel at all i mean because it, it sounds like when you say you took it to a more catastrophic uh, place. Did you, I mean, did you feel like you guys were on the verge of breaking up or like what, you know, like what was your mindset prior to this cheating or, and we'll get into what exactly was the cheating, but what was that mindset? And did you ever communicate that insecurity to Rachel? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, at the time, yeah, I definitely like, but I, I want to make like one, I want to put it to bed. Like we weren't on a break. There was, I don't know where that came from, but I like, we were not separated or anything like that. So yeah, I mean, like when, when I acted out, I felt like maybe we were kind of in like, like we were starting to check out and you know, we're, we were just in a really dark place. Like it's, it's hard to describe because like, even looking back on it, like I just, it, it takes me to a place where like, I really wish I just didn't do that. Like, or just didn't act out. Sure. I mean, like the, the saddest part is like when I ended up telling you, and I know we'll circle back to this, but like we were at an all time high, like it was so amazing. So it's, it's like painful to like think back, like, you know, like how could you do this when like that was just around the corner? But you know, when you go through hard times in a relationship, it's hard to, you know, just convince yourself that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It yeah. seems. The ring. There was seemed to be some vague discussion during AFR or that fight at the house now, for those of you who don't know, I think we often forget that after a bachelor couple uh, gets engaged, they immediately take the ring from you. Right. And then you have these happy couple weekends, which happen every two to three weeks, and you're like locked in a house for four days. It's like nice, but also like fucking torturous because it's just like, <laughs> you can't leave. It's a, it's a nightmare. I fucking hate it. It's like after only doing dates. And I think sometimes they will bring the ring if you ask for it, but like also not what, always. To like, to to like wear it for the four days that you're like hanging out with your fiance. That's wild. It's kind of weird. So I liked it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anytime we got it, yeah. I was like stoked. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that's very endearing. What's what was going on there? Because it, it seemed like you guys were very careful with your words, or it seemed like there might have been some disagreement between you and Rachel in terms of. Are you able to clear the air about that whole situation or or did any of that lead to your insecurity? Again, doesn't sound like you're justifying any of your actions, but I am just curious about the ring and what conversations happened around the ring. Yeah, I mean, we we did have some conversations about like whether we were going to wear the ring if we went back to dating at AFR and you know, I think really that's where me as a partner, as a fiance, as a boyfriend, whatever I was to each other at the time, like that's where I really failed her. Because just like I told you guys, like like seeing the ring for four days, like lit up my world. So like any conversation around that, like really, really cut me deep. And, um, you know, like it doesn't justify my actions. Like I did what I did because I'm insecure. Like I didn't have the strength to take a step back, even if something was said about the ring, like I should have been able to take a step back and just kind of think productively about that. Maybe this is a way we're trying to find like a way to like walk it back so we can get back to that amazing level that we were at or kind of like add some, add some weight to like what we built back then. And I just, I mean, that, that's really where that, that was the first part of where I think I let her down, just letting my insecurities run off leash, um, when we were having conversations surrounding that. And then the second part, if, if there was anything said about the ring, I should have stepped up and said, this is, this is how I feel, or this is what I'm interpreting this as. Is that the same understanding you have? And I know it sounds like so easy and like such a obvious thing I could have done, but you know, like I, I, I was just really weak and it, 
like it, that's I'm like as ashamed of that as what I actually did like a couple days later. Rachel definitely deserves better than that. everyone does. I appreciate you saying that. Let's talk about the night of uh, your mistake. How did you get yourself in a situation where that even was possible? Yeah, I mean, I, I just went out with friends and, you know, I, I was feeling a little in the dumps, you know, like it was another one of those, like uh, we were giving each other space things. So we hadn't talked in a couple of days and, uh, you know, just I was getting attention and I mean, there's just like not even like it, it's like it sucks for me to have to say this because it's like so shameful and like I'm so not proud of it. But like I just kind of gave in like I just. You know, like I just leaned in and I, you know, we, we kissed and that wasn't fair to that girl either. That wasn't considerate of her feelings at all. Like she doesn't want to be wrapped up in any of this. And I just like I, I did it and I realized really quick like this. I don't know what the future holds for me or Rachel, but I know this is not who I am and this is not what I should be doing. So I, I got out of there and it was pretty haunting. We, you know, we talked, me and Rachel, I mean, talked the next day. Did you and, tell her right away? No, I didn't. And Why that not? that's, I think, like as big of a mistake as what I actually did. Because I think- What was going through your head? Like, I mean, this is selfish and I don't stand by it at all. And like biggest regret outside of actually doing it was not telling her right away. I should have told her the day after, hands down, Rachel deserves all that time back and I can't give it to her. And all I can do is you know, tell her I'm really sorry. And like, I just, I really wish that I could give that time back to her. But, uh, you know, I just, at the time, it just really felt like, you know, the relationship was kind of checked out of. And I just, I didn't want, I mean, like, I, I didn't want to handle it kind of like publicly and all that. Like, I just, I felt like if we were checking out, like, you know, and I knew it was a one-time thing. I mean, like the, the, the following weeks, I, you know, I took therapy way more seriously because I was like, okay, what, why did I find this toxic outlet? Like, this is shameful. This is not who I want to believe I am. And I, I won't believe that's who I am. Like, it's a low character moment for sure. Worst thing I could have done to somebody in a relationship who I, really really loved you know like i i avoided situations like that could have put me in the same shoes drinking you know like hanging out with that kind of like you know just friend group in those situations like you know like i i did all the steps i should have been doing before my mistake because then i would have had like a healthy you know a healthy progression to get back on track in my own head and handling my own insecurities so um didn't tell her right away and time just kind of kept going along and me and Rachel would talk every day. We, we kind of put together a game plan of like, okay, do we want this to work? After you cheated or kissed the girl. I cheated. Why didn't you think of just breaking up with her? Well, that, I mean, like I, I actually, I did hear uh, you guys, I think it was on Instagram or something. I heard you, you were kind of, that was a, was a debate talking shit about you? No, yeah. no. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I it, no, you're so. just in the, you guys did, yeah, like, I think it, no when worries. you were saying like, wouldn't it have been better not to tell anyone? Like, like oh. if you were, if you were my friend, oh, yeah. would you say like, I you, you had a crystal ball? I would have told you like, probably just break up with her. And see, like I, I thought of a lot about that because like like afr cut pretty deep and the the actual breakup i was like i mean it's it's weird um you know like i've never i've never felt like that before it was um a dark place like beyond how i could actually like describe and i don't want to because i can already feel like a little emotion coming up so we're gonna avoid that but um yeah like i mean obviously if you saw a crystal ball and you knew that was your future you you kind of think but I mean, that just, that, that would have been so unfair to Rachel to just break up with her after I did something foul and not give her like, I mean, like she, she was owed the truth and there was just, there's no way I could see that playing out that like would have been fair. I hear you saying, I if, guess. If like maybe before I made them, but like even then, like I, I loved her and I didn't, you know, even like till the day we showed up at that house to you know, talk it out and it just ended in a breakup, like head over heels in love with her. So, sure. all right. So back to where you said you were, you guys were having some sort of plan and right. you guys were communicating about fixing whatever issue you guys, you guys were facing. Yeah. So her and I just kind of like, we, we had like a very healthy talk. Um, we, we had been talking the previous days and it was uh, like, it was better. Like we were starting to like kind of open up a little bit more and we, requested things of each other and we picked a date where we were going to like see each other in person so from that point on 
you know, having that that day we were going to see each other in person, even if like, you know, I had to go sleep on the couch or something like that till we could really get back to like being 100 percent. Like I just had something to look forward to in the relationship. And that was huge to me. And after that, I mean, our trajectory and largely almost solely because of the work she put in. And she she said that. And I hope she knows, like, I really appreciate that about her because she put in a lot of work and it got us to such an amazing place. That's why when that i mean that's essentially and this is selfish again i should have told her right away but um that's where i like the guilt really started to take over because she was just being so amazing like the best partner i could ever describe to somebody and that's when you decided to tell her yeah so um one of the things and in hindsight like this was kind of just being like a little needy but before i made my mistake like there was something i asked of her like in the sense of like showing affection so like i said i'm like more of a words of affirmation guy at times and she she would do these these things where she just like randomly text me like love you in the middle of the day and i'd like love that that would melt me so she was she was being amazing we had like an in-person meetup and it went better than i could have ever like described like it was just so fun and we were back and it was just like we were rock solid. I was like, I'm going to be with her forever. And that's where it like really started to dawn on me. Like, yeah, like the voices in your head are like, you guys can make it through this. You should tell her the truth. Like you, you owe her the truth. Like you guys can make it through anything. Like she's, she's going to be here forever. You guys will get through this. Like, just, just tell her. And like, we, we, you know, like, like I said, we were like a little, like we were recovered, but she said she sent that to me the day i told her and when i got that like i mean i'm telling you like the guilt sent, sent you what, what? She, she said like we didn't i went surfing that morning and i'm telling like the guilt like i literally like remember being like on a wave thinking about it like i was on like a big phone board so i was like not doing much but you know like i'm riding there and i'm like riding away I'm feeling like, the guilt I, like, I really like like i just I, like i really want to tell her yeah, no, like I, and then um you know so we didn't talk till i don't know like it was maybe like noon at that point but we talked the night before like we at that point we were on the phone at least every day an hour like at least there was one day we talked on the phone so long i thought like verizon would be like hey did you know and was that a stark something difference? up <laughs> was that a stark difference than before like were you missing days in the past uh ju just during that one time when we were giving each other space okay. we, we always texted a lot before did that you guys too. ever miss uh, like a happy couples weekend uh yeah um there was there did, was one planned did you cancel or she cancel it uh i think it was more mutual in the sense that like she she had coming off like a, like a really gnarly press week and i like i could just tell she she just wanted to be home kind of detox i was trying to like kind of be as like um you know like as empathetic to her situation sure. as i could and i totally could understand like they were flying her all over the country yeah. it was like constant and like where it looks fun you probably know like that's exhausting but at the i mean it sounds like you've done a lot of work on on focusing how you could have or should have been more empathetic at the time did that fuck with you a little bit or did you did, did it take a yeah, lot of I mean, emotional to, energy to like yeah. convince yourself I, not I, to I, freak I, out well yeah i mean it it wasn't so much as like that one getting like like called off that that like was totally understandable she was exhausted and i, I wanted to be like a good supporting partner to that and understanding it was it was more like we didn't have one like a like oh okay we'll just do next week or like you know uh, two weeks from now like it was kind of like i just like we can't do it this weekend and like that that was like okay breathe like that's totally understandable it wasn't until like a week after where we like set a date and then like then you get something to look forward to so like then you're like okay like breathe like just you you have that thing to look forward to but like i mean i, I looked forward to those so much like so yeah, I mean, it was a bummer not seeing her, but like I and I, I would hang out with Rachel if like she was at the time like in the worst mood ever. But like people need their space. Sure. And I, I wish I like looking back on it, that was like super insecure of me that that trigger, you know, like or, you know, hurt my feelings at all. Because like I was like talking the talk saying like, oh, I totally understand. No worries. But then I act out like that's that's not fair to anybody. And that was pretty weak. And, you know, it's not cool man. how much did the show i mean even though you were like the fuck it i'm all in guy when you got engaged at any point like watching the show back or things like that did the did the bizarreness of fucking bachelor world start fucking with you did that ever make you question the authenticity of the relationship absolutely not okay what was the catalyst for you taking that time you say like there was just that one 
chunk of time where you weren't talking, you were taking space. Was it the ring conversation that was the catalyst for that? Or like what happened for you not to be talking for a few days? Uh, I just, I, I could tell that like there was just a lot of stress on the relationship and I was worried I was coming off really needy because mm -hmm. I, I was like, like I've, I've said, like I, I was super insecure, like seeing everything back was a million times harder than I could have ever imagined. And it just like, like me putting added pressure, like I, I saw myself doing it at the time. Like I at least was that self-reflective to be like, okay, maybe I need to give her space. Like that's the hardest thing ever for me to do because I'm, I'm more of like a let's tackle our issues thing. But like that really can be like such an amazing thing for a relationship to like have that confidence to take it back a step and just be like, she's going to find her way home. Like just let her, let her find it herself. And she did. I mean, I just, messed up and you know just it was being the house a, down. yeah just yeah. being a piece of shit it was like it was like a scene in a movie yeah. where it's just like you you set a bomb to like blow the whole house up and then all of a sudden you realize like wait we have to we made up but wait i have a bomb going off if to defuse the bomb it's like it's like a you ever seen the movie what about bob no oh my god he's like the bombs are in the house i don't know sorry but uh yeah <laughs> so i mean great analogy. just just to wrap it wasn't up, my like, best but anyways <laughs> why, why i told her like i i got the text that day like she said like randomly like love you and we 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 at that point weren't texting that much we talked on the phone a ton but like when i saw that i was just like oh my god like i need i need to tell her and that phone call that night was like three hours and i mean like me and rachel had this like amazing talent to talk about nothing for hours but at the tail end of that it started to come up because like other contestants were having like issues with like ex-girlfriends and stuff and it felt like okay, like like Nate, like, <laughs> Nate. Yeah, I didn't know he had issues. I don't have a TikTok. No, but so. it, was it the? I mean, who else? Yeah, it was Nate, right? Yeah. Uh, well, or I mean, Eric. well, and Eric. Yeah, Eric yeah. ended up having okay. some, but yeah. I didn't Nate know about Eric, that at yeah. the time. Um, no, so it and like, you know, love those dudes. Um, yeah, I, I'm fine. sure there's a lot to their stories too. Uh, Where was I? Uh, so so like that kind of stuff started coming up and like, you know, like I, I didn't tell her like the entirety of it right away, which like in hindsight, like I absolutely should have, but like in hindsight, I should have told her the day after it happened or the second after, um, because I didn't want to waste like a second of her time. But what did you tell her? So at first I, I said like, oh, you know, like the, like I kind of led this girl on the other night and then she was like, well, what do you mean? How? And then like, like we were kind of yeah, like, kinda unfold weak at no, first. it was yeah. so weak. Like, trust me, I'm like not standing by that at all. Yeah. That was so lame. And honestly, I would, be, I would be like, if someone was like, so I led someone on last night, I'd be like, what the fuck well, does that mean? Well, okay, okay. <laughs> but in, in like our defense, like stuff in I'm, our work, like I was getting, time. I was getting roasted, I think at one point for like watching like somebody's story on Instagram that I didn't know. And I was like, I don't know, like I get like these followers. And when I see the little red, you know, the little red circle, I click them occasionally. Like, I was getting like, sure. So, so like, that's, that was the point I was like, like in my mind, like I was just kind of being a chicken and like, I didn't, you know, and then we, as the conversation progressed, she was listening really well. At a certain point I was like, okay, like if I tell her now, like there's a chance of this working out, but like, like you, you need to tell her now, like, because you've already kind of like done this weird, like set the stage that sounds like bullshit to her. So I told her, I was like, look, this is, and I, I'm sure it was like an extra added like complexity that like we were in such an amazing place, but this happened when that wasn't our reality. Sure. So I told her like, you know, Hey, like when, like, like I just fucked up, I, I went and I like kissed this other girl and we were like, we were in a bad spot and I like, don't like, I don't want to condone what I did at all. It's just like, like I messed up, like, like, but I like love you so much. And like, I, I want us to get past this, like yeah, how, and, um, you know, she was just like very maturely, just like, let, let me think about this. And then, uh, you know, a couple of days went by and I, I was always in team. Like, look, take as much time as you need. I want this to work out. Like I want you, I want absolutely like for us to, to make it through this. So like, if you need a week, if you need a month, like take what you need, like I, I'm the one who messed up. Mm -hmm. Like I can't ever talk about like how somebody like handles how I like how they process me fucking up, you know, like mm -hmm. that, that would be super hypocritical of me. So where it ended up landing is there was a, a house meetup scheduled and uh, I was notified the day before that there were going to be cameras there. So wait, you, you told her uh -huh. and then did you guys keep talking about this or what, like what af after you like told her the full truth, like what happened? Uh, so I, so I told her the full truth and she's, you know, like it was like, okay, 
I need to process this. And that, that I was like, okay, okay absolutely. Sure. Please do that. All right, she needed to process. And then, and like, did I talked the next day or did you no, no, no communication. I just, I, I sent a text every day, like just trying to be like, like not overbearing, not like, oh my God, like, like, please. Oh my God. Like, I was just like, look, I know I messed up. Like I'm here to talk whenever you need, but take as much time as you need. Like I, I just am all about this and I'm so sorry. And so, so eventually like, it was like, okay, let's try to work this out in person. And when I heard that my eyes lit up because I was like, okay, sh like we're going to work this out. And then like, obviously like everyone kind of filled me in, like there were going to be cameras there. And at first that, that was a little like, okay, okay. Like I'm a little bit freaking out, but like, you know, yeah, metal was to your head, you know, like, you... metal, like, so, so I was yeah. like, okay, like, you know, I, I don't know like who wanted them there, but like, there was just the reality of it. And I was like, so she, she got the phone with you and called the producer, I'm guessing maybe I'd be probably not. I mean, like I, I just, I'm sure she like reached out to her people as like, she had every right to do. Yeah, well, she probably, and I yeah. don't know who I'm that sure was she, involved. She reached out to them. To, it would make sense that she reached out to people from the show to, to let them know what you did. I, I totally, yeah. I, I can't mind reader. Yeah. Um, like I'm I can't, just I can't project anything. Uh, if I were I in her shoes, to. I would have been like, <laughs> I would have told somebody. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, like I said again, like I, I made the mistake. Yeah. Like, how, however, you know, we move forward from there. Like, I, I, when I told the truth, I knew I was like to some degree, like, did you losing negotiation power of yeah. like how it was handled? Did you speak sure. with her at all, whether on the phone or FaceTime or in person, before you, you saw her when you walked into that house with cameras? A couple texts. Yeah. But not, a, not, a, not on the phone. But I mean, neither here nor there. Like the, the general consensus of when we were going into that house meetup was we're not giving up on this. We're coming in to work on it. So that was your mind frame that when you walked into that, you didn't think it was going to be some breakup situation. Your, your mindset no, was I mean, to I, fix I the relationship. I literally, I thought, I thought, I really hoped and thought I tried to go in as confident as I could. Like I thought we were going to get to a point where it was like, look, you effed up. But you, by being you, not you. No, no, yeah, yeah. No, like no. I, I thought, like I was hoping that we'd land it. Like, look, you know, you effed up, but you're going to make it up to me because like, you know, I've, I've seen how great we can be together and like, Sure. Yeah, you know, like we're gonna we're gonna see if we can get through this. Like in I I mean I've lost like a lot of sleep what ifing like on that house meetup I really have because it's like yeah, you know, like I, I watched it back and obviously there was some stuff taken out, there was some stuff like but generally speaking, like I, I look back on it and I'm like, you know, like what if I did this? What if I said that what if I didn't say this? Like it, so it it's it's been really tough because yeah, like like you just when you go down that rabbit hole you could what if like yourself out of a lot of sleep which i have and it's it's just tough because i mean like i would have loved for us to get past that but i mean like what i did wasn't cool sure. and i totally respect her decision what was the reasoning for the journal i didn't think it was that big of a deal there were other stronger opinions on the journal what like, do you guys think yeah seriously i mean you guys can diss me i can take it i don't know i it was definitely a, i didn't think it would be such a point of discrepancy amongst viewers if i'm being honest because i really didn't think it was that big of a deal but what was the episode we were recapping it on and it was like there was a we had a full debate of like Machina what sheena hated it yeah sheena was like it was all the negative stuff it was all like see bad stuff about rachel nick was like fine with it, it was, why did you bring a journal so so i i was flustered for sure and i wanted it to work out I did. I wanted to be as articulate as I could and not be like stumbling over my words, which I did anyways. But I mean, like, it, it's so funny that like people are like, oh, you keep a list of like mean things about your fiance. And I'm like, there are so many nice things written in there about her. Like, I mean, you could really like follow the path of like the relationship's trajectory. And my therapist was just saying like, journal your thoughts so you don't think about them all day. So I could like focus at work. So when it was really hard and like, you know, we were having tough conversations, like I was just writing those down so I wouldn't think about them all day and be like, oh wait, but like, did she mean this? Or, you know, like, did I mean this? Or all that, like, I was just like, get them out of your head and onto paper. So yeah, I mean, they were, and that that's another thing I what if, like, I'm like, well, like now that I'm watching it back, that clearly like created contentious, like, like a contentious uh, environment, and that's certainly not what I was going for. But like, I mean, yeah, like if, if I knew it was going to go over like that, I was not, I should not have brought that. Like I was just trying to articulate like my thoughts and what yeah. I was going through the best I could because I was just really frazzled. I mean, some would say I looked sweaty and on drugs. <laughs> so the, the internet did suggest that. 
Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, drugs are who bad. were you talking to on the phone? Were you on drugs? Were you on drugs? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't on ones? drugs. I don't even think I had a <laughs> yeah. drink for like which ones weeks, and yeah. or not weeks, <laughs> days. You know, obviously because I was just uh, uh, people were worried about me. Who, so who was the friend that you kept? Uh, uh, so he's one of my best. Or yeah, like, who it was it? A so friend? who were you on the phone with? So I called one of my closest friends. Uh, he had kind of been my uh, you know my like support system through the whole thing. And he was like one of the the biggest voices. Like you can go in and fix this. Like who? Like like you can do this. Like like from. So went in. It didn't go super smoothly. <laughs> so I unbuttoned my shirt. I threw my mic off, and uh, I called him. And I was like, I was like, like I just I I don't think we're like arriving at the right spot like what do i I'm do just, i'm sorry for laughing i imagine the friend be like you can fix this and then tino out there be like yeah no bro it's not like what <laughs> it was, it's it was not that. landing i was just i was like i was like oh, dude like i'm like i i really fucked up here like i don't i don't know what to do like yeah like i i just like i would have spent a week there like if it meant like like no matter what we were talking about, no matter what, I was just like, we can talk a long time. Like as long as we were moving towards like, you know, it seemed like, oh, like we both really want this. And it was just, it was tough to see through like how frazzled, sleep deprived, insecure I was like feeling at that time. So called him kind of because I needed a voice of reason. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, I mean, watching that back, it was like so ridiculous, you know, like, cause then I walked around the house cause the mics, like once they saw that I ripped it off, they like started following me. So I was like walking so they couldn't hear me. Was a lot cut out and what parts do you wish would have been kept in? Because from a viewer's perspective, it was like they're on the couch. Tino leaves. He comes back. He leaves. Like it just felt like we missed a lot. Yeah, how long in real time do you think the conversation was? And then Alex's question. Hour and a half. An hour and a half. Two hours? Two yeah. hours. What? Yeah. Is there anything like Ali asked uh, that you wish you would would have made the cutting room floor? We understand that not everything gets to, but no. I mean, I was just bummed we broke up. Like, I don't really care. Like, if like like I don't have a side in this. Like, I I messed up, and she had every right to break up with me for that. Like, I no. I mean, I just I wish wish like we didn't televise everything. What did you think of AFR? Uh, that was mean. Yeah, that wasn't very nice. I don't know. Um, no, nah, I mean, like, again, it just, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I don't ever think about it. I think I have, like, disassociation with that because I, like, I don't remember it. What so. was going on in your head when Avon walked out? I, I think I was just kind of like, and this is, like, me, like, kind of guessing because, again, like, I don't really remember it. I think I was just kind of like, why am I still out here? Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, like, they could have a cute moment. Like, why am I here? Like at that point we'd been broken up for a month. Like I really, like I was at war with myself even going to AFR. Like, I mean, like the pressure was on to go, but it also is like, I was like, man, like I, like I feel really bad. Like I just, like I told this girl that I messed up and I kissed another girl. We broke up and she has to see me four weeks later. Like that's torture for her. Mm -hmm. So, and like, likewise for me, like I was, you know, not like looking for, like there was no way AFR was going to be like a nice look for me. And I, I landed at like, okay, you have to go just get up there and say you're sorry and tell everyone how much you were like, like I wanted to tell because me and Rachel weren't talking at all. There was no like toxic texts or anything or like drunk phone calls between us after the breakup. We clean break. You know, like I, like when I was going through the stages of the breakup, like I really did land at like, like a lot of self-reflection where I was like, man, like I really appreciate so much that she did for me. And like, I, I really wish at my dark times I could have like leaned more on that because I, I don't think I would have gone like, like with a toxic mm -hmm. outlet. But so that was like one of the things like I, I wanted to do at AFR, like really make sure, like I told her on this world stage, like, look, I appreciate you. And there were things that like, and like you guys, I, I lived it. It was like my life. And you could probably attest to this too on your journey. But the, like the way Rachel treated me and shined like on our journey was like so amazing. And she was so good to me. And it just, it was so not right how it ended and what I did that I wanted to like say publicly, like, look, I, I really appreciate like everything. Like this is certainly not how I wanted it to end. Like I, I wanted to be with her forever, but like the time we spent together, like means so much. It still does. Like even after AFR, like I can still appreciate like her setting the bar really high on how a woman can treat somebody in a relationship. So did you have any frustration with Rachel about AFR or was that more your frustration with the show? Oh, I was way more frustrated at the show. Like I, like I said before, like if 
Yeah, like if Rachel wanted Avon to come out in front of me, like I can't really say much. I was the one who cheated. So like, you know, she has every right to be hurt. Like I'd be hurt, but you know, how, how like we all process things is different. That's what makes us individuals. That's, you know, like I went to rock bottom when I felt hurt and I went and kissed some other girl. So I don't, I can't pass judgment on that. The show, like, I mean, I would have thought with them knowing how like much I'd been struggling, like wouldn't, wouldn't go there like, or do something like that. I mean, like the whole day before I like locked myself in the bathroom of the trailer that they put me up in. So I wouldn't have to do b-roll or anything like that i was like i'm not doing it i was like you know i was crying in the bathroom because i just like it was overwhelming being there and that was like pretty taxing sorry man yeah ask me something funnier let's get off this topic <laughs> how about we do this we'll take a break We're, we'll do texting office hours and we'll give some people some texting advice how's that sound yeah let's do that and then we'll come back with tino for I'm some final thoughts shot. you're fine okay cool and we'll come back i want to know if you've talked with avon i want to know kind of where your heart is what's next but we'll do that after texting office hours, after we, uh, we get things fun. In the meantime, while, uh, uh, while we're bringing our people up, go buy my book. <laughs> All right, so texting office hours, you ready? Yes. We'll liven it up, and we'll come back with some final thoughts. If you've talked to Avon, do you uh, miss Rachel? Would you want her to give you a second chance? These are all questions we need to ask. I'm sorry, we did, I, have, I have to do my job. <laughs> do you guys think he's torturing me? You think he's going full? Full uh, AFR on me. Nice to meet you. This yeah, is my nice friend. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is my friend Tino. He's going to be helping us out. We got Allie and Amanda Hi. in the room too. Hey. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so I'm sure you know the drill. I'm going to be like, well, what's up? And you're going to give me a fake. Wait, name. wait, time out. Wait, I actually don't know the drill because my okay. friend signed me up for this. So like, I, I'm Great. sorry, I don't listen, but <laughs> Love this. I'm just, she wanted me to tell my story. Uh, all right. So. I'm going to be like, what's up? And then give me a fake name. Okay. And be like, I'm um, Beth, whatever your fake name. And then your real okay. age. And then you don't need to use other names. Like you can refer to him, she, they, like you, or, you know, you don't need to like make up a fake name and overcomplicate it. Just, uh, we'll, we'll, we want to protect people's identities, but. Okay. So wait, so I'm saying my fake name and then my age. Yeah. Your real age. How's it going? Hi, um, my name's Kat. I'm 25 years old. And I um, went on a date with this guy who's moving way too quick. And so basically, I just need help with how to end it and let him down kind of easy because we see each other at the gym. So we're definitely going to run into each other. OK. All right. A bit. All right. OK. Do, is there any relevant backstory we need to go? Like, did you did he ask you out at the gym? Like. No. Okay. So basically, um, we matched on Hinge one time, like a while back. And then I saw him at the gym and I messaged him and I was like, Hey, like, I think we match. I know. I feel like it's kind of weird, but, um, he was cute. So I was like, whatever. So he, um, messaged me back. He asked me out on a date. We went on our first date. It was great. The second date he wanted right the next day, which I thought was kind of weird. So I was like, okay, whatever. We went on the second date. And then the third date was the following week. And he, we were driving home. He was taking me to my house and then he asked me to be his girlfriend already. And I was like, oh what yeah. the heck? So after two and dates, he asked you to be his girlfriend? Yeah. I was like, what did you say? Um, I, I didn't even say anything because I was so scared. I was like, I, and we didn't even kiss either yet at that point. So I, I, I honestly, the ride home was so awkward. I didn't even know what to say. I was taken aback. And then finally, when I got to my house, I was like, um, I just think we're moving a little too fast right now. And I think we should just kind of slow it down. And then he didn't really say much and it just got kind of awkward. Okay. So I'm, I'm curious, had he not said that, like, what were you, how were you feeling after date two before he went? I, I actually really liked him. Our okay. dates were great. Our conversation always flowed. Um, and when he asked me to be his girlfriend, I, that's when I was like, okay, no, I don't think I am feeling you the same as I did. Okay. This is, this is just for me. This is just like for fun uh -huh. because like, uh -huh. it's a really, I mean, in real, in life, we know that it's a, it's weird to be put in that situation. Like it's yeah. a super awkward situation. I totally empathize where you're like, I don't, I just want to get out of this fucking car. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, I totally get that. Um, <laughs> knowing, just hearing that you up until that point liked him, I definitely think, we'll call it a red flag that he did that. Yes, major red flag. Yeah, I would have loved for you at that point to say, hey, listen, like I've had a really good time with you in the first two dates, but like I said, like, you wanted to be my girlfriend felt a little fast. Just well, I told him that. Okay. I, we face, we FaceTimed we the next day. Okay. 
And he was like, hey, like, how are you feeling after what I asked you? And I was like, honestly, I just feel like that was way too fast. I feel like we still need to continue to get to know each other because I'm I'm interested in you and I want to get to know you more, but right. I'm not at the point where I want to be your girlfriend yet. And he would just get really defensive okay. and he would be like, well, why don't you want to be my girlfriend? Like you could still be my girlfriend and we could still get to know each other. And I was like, but I want to be in a relationship with someone where I basically almost fully know them. You know, I don't want to still no, totally. feel you know, you weird. So again, you don't have at that point, the fact that he got defensive and like, you know, that, well, that was another red flag that that to me, that's the red flags for him to get defensive. To me, that's the red flag. I, next time something like that happens and I don't even if you want to do this with this guy for fun, I would love to know right <laughs> off the bat, like, what are five things that you, like, why do you want to date me? Like, what are things specifically oh, about question. me that you like, you know? Well, because I did, like, I just I did do, ask him. or we're cool, or you're fun is not an answer. I know? did ask him a similar question, and he did say he just has, he's never felt this way about a girl this fast. It's not an answer. And I was like, yeah. oh, that could kind of be a basic answer a little yeah. bit. Yeah, your gut, you know? your gut was great. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. That. Um, <laughs> no, and then like if if a guy next time someone says something like that, you go no. Like what it is about me? Like what it is about me? Like actual tangible things? Like what have you learned about me on our two dates that you want in your relationship that you haven't had in the past? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Wow. Well, also on the on the Facetime, he asked if I loved him, and that's when I got really scared. On the Facetime. So Yes. <laughs> it's like really weird. Yeah. So you don't need to do that with this guy. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> but in the future, I think questions like that are lean on those in the future. Okay. Because I could imagine maybe guys, I'm, I'm sure this isn't the first time a guy has tried to move quickly. Emotionally. Oh, it is the first time. The first time. And that's, why, that's why I got so scared because this has never happened to oh, me wow, before. Okay. Yeah. So oh. I was like, I didn't even know what to say half the time when he talked to me because he was just telling me weird shit. And I was like, OK, I don't know what to say back to you because I don't want to lean him on, you yeah. know, but I also don't want to be a bitch and all right, so not say anything at all. How do we say goodbye to this guy? Oh, because... God, I love these. <laughs> all right, <laughs> you well, just you, you have a nice first? little paragraph and you just say a paragraph. I, I don't know. You don't want to just be blunt and bo like, I don't know. Round it out. Make it soft. Is there a way mm -hmm. just to like. I want you to get your fitness in. I don't want you to have to ad ad like adjust your life. But like, is there a well, way? I'm, I'm scared that he's going to um, see me at the gym and then be like, hey, like, can we talk? Well, OK, so I have to tell you about what happened this morning. So this whole week I had a friend come into town this past few days and we didn't really talk. But then he randomly FaceTime me one day. And we were talking for a little bit and then he kept trying to call me throughout the week. And I was like, Hey, I have a friend in town. Like, I don't want to be busy talking to you. Like I want to focus on him, whatever. So finally, when my friend left, he kept trying to call me and I was just trying to let it, let him down easy by just being like, Oh, I'm busy. Like I can't really talk right now until this morning. He texted me and he's like, yo, you need to make time for me or we're gonna be done. And I just had to let him down. And I was like, okay, well, I just think it's best we both go our separate Whoa, ways. Yeah, he, wrote, mm -hmm. he wrote, yo, meet me today to talk or I'm done with this. What? And I was, I was <laughs> about to meet up with him. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> right? So I was like, okay, we wait, have to be wait, done. But is, yeah, and holy. Yeah, I read it. Sorry, busy. What's up? I, let's do a dramatic reading, Tino. You can be her. I'll be him for... Everyone's safe. Oh, God. I'll be the bad guy here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're blue, Tino. Oh, if you want to put a little character I, in I, I got to I want to start at today at 10.54 a.m. Today at 10.54. <laughs> sorry. Stage directions. I'm, so I'm her? Yeah. You, you start go. with we sorry, like busy. Voice. <laughs> sorry, busy. What's up? I call. I'm reading it exactly. I call because I want <laughs> to talk to you. Not just a quick question. I will text you if I have a quick question. What? Hit me back when you have 30 minutes. I hate this guy. I thought that was aggressive. It was very aggressive. So aggressive. <laughs> yeah. If it has anything to do with us, I don't want to deal with it right now. I have a friend in town who I don't get to see often, and I want to focus my time on him. I don't want to have these conversations in front of him and make him feel weird. So if you want to text me about it, that's fine. If not, you'll have to wait till he leaves. Okay. Then he writes, when I like someone, I enjoy talking to them and seeing them. I was being respectful of your time. 
With him, by not asking to see you in person during this time, I figured a call was fine. I guess not. Just call me for like 10 minutes, nothing, n- none serious conversations, just to say hi and talk about a plan for Monday. He literally just said, he yelled at you. <laughs> right? <laughs> because I have, yeah, okay, sorry. Tina. I'm at dinner right now and then going to the movies. And then he writes, yo. He didn't write yo. He just said, no exclamation point. Yo, meet <laughs> me today or talk or I'm done. Now he wants to talk. It sounds like he's going to murder you. Literally, I don't even That's think we need to text him. him. Block him. Block him. I yeah. don't even think we need to text him. Yeah, so okay, I'm, wait, I'm sorry. Can we just acknowledge that? Okay, well, in that case, I honestly think it's just best we go our separate ways. And him like reacting like to that. It, right? And then his phone, his phone, he has, he has his phone on silent notifications. He's not even... Take a call. <laughs> he went off the grid went immediately the grid. after. I'm like scared he's going to put a tracking device under my car or something. Well, listen, this guy is pretty aggressive and I, I don't think, I think you should block him. I don't think there's any text to send to this guy. He's not but what, thinking but rationally. What, but what happens when I see him at the gym and he tries to talk to me or like, what if he, well, I, like, do I say, if we walk past each other, do I say hi? No, I, I don't you don't know say anything. Act, you act or? like you don't know each other. I mean, ultimately, I okay. think, Ultimately, I think you're going to be fine, but like I think it's always better to be safe than sorry. This is the classic kind of guy who gives himself a ton of credit for like being vulnerable. Like there's a lot of guys who I can see that who yeah. aren't good at being vulnerable and, mm-hmm. and men need to work on it. A lot of guys are good at being vulnerable and it's or it's a work in progress and there's a type of guy who like who's terrible at it, but maybe wants to even, <laughs> right? And and when, mm-hmm. and then they give a little something and they want all the validation in the world for them to just open up a little bit. And this guy thinks you, oh, that's that's the disconnect. You know, it's like he yeah. feels something he hasn't felt before. And now he's made it your responsibility yes, to validate yes. him for like, and it, and it puts he so finally much pressure feels, on me. Yeah. But yeah. He, he thinks you owe him something. Listen, I think that's why I asked before. I, I think on, I think you're going to be fine. But maybe just take a couple of weeks away from the gym. You oh, know? Like, that's so hard. I guess I could go to a different one. Yeah, listen, you, you know this guy. We don't know him. But like, I think maybe just let things simmer. Simmer. And then maybe just. Do you have friends who go to this gym? Like, do you mm-hmm. maybe yeah, you bring my your, friends do? Yeah, yeah, bring some, some companions. Again, I, th- I think this is overkill, but better safe than sorry. And at least okay. he'll feel comfortable. And my guess is he most more than likely he's gonna chill the fuck out. He's embarrassed. This is all a heat in the moment. My guess is he's gonna feel real stupid about how he acted. <laughs> I kind of hope he does. Um, but on the off chance he's just shitty, like just take a few weeks <laughs> and then go with some friends and. Assess the situation. I also think usually if you say like the word uncomfortable, be like, hey, you're making me really uncomfortable. Like if he does try to talk to you, like reaching out after the fact, being like, hey, it makes me really uncomfortable that you're trying to talk to me when we've agreed um, like yeah. nothing else is moving on. Like I think usually mm-hmm. that's kind of like a word that's like read the room. Like it's not just like okay. annoying. You're like actively making me feel like I can't be in spaces that I want to be in. Do you think yes. there's any, I'm mean, just asking you two women, do you think there's any justification for her to send a follow-up text right now just to point out how uncomfortable no right I, no I would, I, that just, would be like if he tried to talk to her at the gym then i think we should that's just block the him right that i think sent. block him and then if she if he tries to talk to her at the gym tell him in person you're making me feel uncomfortable like leave it very brief because i don't want to open up any sort of chain of communication between the two of them yeah oh that's good okay and if you tell him at the gym verbally you are making me uncomfortable not only do you like put that in his mind you alert people around you feel he's in a public that, space yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and then also you That's can tell true. your gym if this dude is like harassing you when you're trying to work out like at a certain and again, <laughs> this is all like really far down the line. Hopefully it yeah, never yeah. gets to this point. But like that's ridiculous. You I should really be able to work th- out. I think he'll probably get embarrassed and he'll probably avoid the gym as well. And he'll probably feel in shame. But on the off chance he, he doesn't escalates. And, and, he, and this escalates, yes. I think that's that's what we could do. Um, okay. Wow. But, but block him and block okay, him on yeah. social media. Unfollow him on all the apps. Go off the grid. He actually doesn't have social media, which I kind of liked at first. But no, I think it. I think being off social media completely is people give way too much, like green flags for that. <laughs> it works for some people. I can see that. Yeah. I, I think it's fine, but like people act like you know, like it's the coolest thing. Yeah. Or it's just like I don't know. Maybe there's fucking weird. <laughs> um, who, who knows but I just think yeah. it's too much credit is, is given alright well we feel good we have a good game plan 
Yes, going to block him right after this. Yeah, let's block him. Sorry I had to go through that. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like you handled everything perfectly, though. Like you trusted I felt your gut. like I did. Yeah, you did a great job. You yeah, know? thank you. <laughs> All right, well, uh, keep us posted. We'd love a follow-up of do. how things, if anything, escalated. Obviously, hopefully <laughs> they didn't. Uh, if you were able to get back to the gym, we'd appreciate a follow-up. Of course. Thank you so much for your time. All right, take care. All right, bye. How's it going? Hi, I am Liz and I'm 25. How can we help Liz? So I'm looking to um, get help to draft a text to shoot my shot with a guy that I went on with a date a year ago. Okay. Why do we want to shoot our shot with a guy we went on a date with a year ago? So I went on a date with this guy a year ago and he lives in a different state. So we met up in the middle um, and we had a really good date and I felt like we really connected and I've gone on a lot of hinge dates and I often don't feel like I ever want to see them again. Sure. Um, but I was really excited to plan a second date with him. So we texted for a while. And then um, we, when we were trying to actually plan the second date, it was really hard to actually find a time because we were living so far apart. So in the end, he ended up saying that he, like that we, that he didn't think this was going to work out and we haven't talked since. But then the other day um, I had unfollowed him on Instagram but I was still friends with him on Snapchat. And the other day I watched his story for the first time in probably six months and saw that he had a geotag with the same city that I live in. So I was curious if he had moved to the same city and I cross referenced his hinge profile and he had updated that location as well. Okay. So I thought, why not? If I'm still thinking of him a year later, why not see if he's interested? All right. So what we know is, do we know if he's moved back or we think he's possibly moved back or he's just in the area? I think he's in the area because if his hinge profile location is updated and like he's posting consistent stories in this location, yeah. I assume he's living here. Okay. What do we think? I think we lead with that you saw his Snapchat story because... While I appreciate the cross-referencing and I would have done the same, we can't let him know that we're that invested. So I think we just make it seem more casual than it is. And these texts you sent are just from like when you guys were talking way back in the day? Yeah, okay. the, that was from a year ago. So you could, like the last one is him saying... October 19th, 2021. Yeah, yeah it was like more than a year, uh, almost a year ago at this point. All right, so he wrote, <laughs> hey, I have to cancel. I need to take a meeting this Thursday after work. I'm sorry. I honestly don't think this is going to work and I'm not... the ghosting type so just being straight with you i wish you all the best i appreciate the honesty i wish you the best too you responded i mean listen good for him good for you this was a very like he was direct that's for sure <laughs> i you could send him a text that's like hey saw on your snapchat story you're in whatever place uh i would like to see you just being straight with you you know yeah. like, he, do you think like, he's really was, gonna get the reference well it's gonna be right the, not if, the last not if he deleted said. it not if his phone oh, clears him yeah it's been well, a year. I was thinking of about just DMing him, him or like Snapchat. messaging him on Snapchat Oop, and like just, saying, just, hey, you know, I a... noticed your geotag. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's creepy, though. <laughs> I feel like if he posts something, you could just very casually be like, hey, how long are you in town for? That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah, Tino yeah or his... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. No. What would you I mean, do? What does she have to lose? Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be clear, we it. have nothing to lose. We're just trying to think of the best possible trying to option. And it's a good to remember here that like, as I think we said this last week with Kit and the caller, who you need to be um, zero emotionally invested in this. Like you are truly shooting your shot. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a half court last second shot. You know, because, he, you know, he was pretty clear. It wasn't working for him. I don't think it was just the distance. You know, you have to assume it wasn't just the distance. Like as much fun as you had, I don't think it was matched on his end. If just just that's the safe, honest response of what you should be thinking is as hard as it is. I still think you should shoot it. You have nothing to lose. I just don't love the idea of her make it seem like uh, you're in the air. You're in the, I don't know. What is, it's the most casual way of doing it. What if he doesn't even have her number saved and then she texts him and he has to like either ask who is this or not respond because you don't want to ask who is this and then see the name and not text back because that's even worse. All right. So I just love, I always love randomly reaching out to someone and striking up a conversation. Like 
hey, I saw you in the area. I don't think she, I don't think you should reach out and be like, hey, I saw you in the area. We should get together. You know, I don't think you should go that hard to the paint with your first message. I think he, I think we should first see if he's interested in even replying. What if it's, okay, let's say it's like a sculpture garden in this city. She says, I love this place. Or like, you know what I mean? Like comment on the okay. post. What? And then him being like, yeah, it's great. What is he posting? How long is Snapchat? he in Snapchat? Uh, it was, is this, I think it, it was a like, sculpture guy. Is it still up? Does he have any current stories? Um, let me see. Oh, us, story. <laughs> um, I think before it was like him, it was like him in nature with his dog or something. It wasn't super descriptive. Do you know his dog's does name? not have a story right now. I feel like Nelly living her best life. I mean, I, I think also you've waited a year. We can wait a few more days for the right story he mm -hmm. posts on Snapchat. And then, yeah, kind of to Allie's point, you know, just reply to one of his stories and ask, you know, like, oh, that, that looks fun. Like, what have you been up to? Or I would even just say, like, that looks fun. Da, 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 da. And if he's like, yeah, it was be like, how long are you in town for? Yeah. See if he responds and then ask him a question. Because yeah. then if he doesn't respond, you haven't put too much out there. No, that's fair. Originally, I was thinking of straight up asking if he wanted to get together. No. And then at the end saying, I'm just trying to shoot my shot. But it that may be too direct. You don't to need say. to point out what you are doing. <laughs> you know? So you clearly are shooting your shot, uh, especially if you were to like reach out to him for the first time in a year and be like, do you want to get together? You don't need to say I'm su shooting my shot after that. But uh, to Ali's point, I think the safer way is let's just see if this guy's going to reply to you. And then from there, see if you can get a dialogue. If there's a couple messages like and again, like, oh, and maybe he posts something that you recognize. Oh, are you in the area? Then see if he replies. Mm -hmm. If he says yes, I would say Hey, I know things didn't. I, I I think you need to acknowledge. You can't just pretend that he didn't end things. Wouldn't you agree, Tino? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like maybe I'm a little bit more cavalier about it, but I I would have just like DM the snap story and. So is he tagging the location, or did you just recognize that his that geo hike his or, geo location must be on or something, right? But like, did he tag it in his story, or you just saw it? Like Snapchat, you can just see where people are, I guess. No, it, like you can swipe through, and there's different filters, and then some of the filters have the name of the city. So on he it. tagged it, like so yeah. people would know he was in that yeah, city. Yeah, or he he just doesn't know it's on. Oh, I mean, I, yeah. I like the how long are you in town for and then and a, or yeah. like, oh, you're in town, kind of start the convo and see how he responds. Yeah, I would keep it light at first, yeah. send something, see if it replies back. Oh, are you in town? Oh, I moved here. And then you say something like, hey, I know uh, I know things didn't end up, you know, maybe throw a joke in there. What's the joke? So you, you're saying you want her to acknowledge like, oh, it didn't work out last time. I think... You kind of, I mean, if, yeah, because like if I, it's not easy to send the text that he did, you know, yeah. I'm not saying we should give a ton of credit for doing the bare minimum, but we live in a time where he even recognized that most people just the ghost. You went on how many dates with this guy? It was just one. Just one. And most times, again, it's sad that it's the reality, but the reality is when people go on one date, they don't often take the time to even send the awkward text of, hey, listen, this isn't working out for me. I wish you all the best. Right. And so if I sent that and a year later got a random message from that same person be like, do you want to go out again? I'd be like, uh, <laughs> okay, I guess we'll do this again. No, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and, it, and granted, he could easily have changed his mind. We're, you're basically hoping that you reach out to him at a time where he's in a transitional period, whatever reason he changed his mind about you a year ago, he's thinking, you know what, I did have a nice time and maybe he was hung up on a different girl then, we have no idea, you went on one date with him. These are all the reasons why you should shoot your shot. But you need to prepare yourself for the possibility that he very much knew that this, you know, this wasn't what he was looking for. He went on one date, he moved on, and now, you know, he's good. So, yeah, I think you not acknowledging it is kind of potentially like he's going to be like, <laughs> OK, uh, yeah, maybe something like small, like, like, oh, I know it didn't work out last time. But like, mm -hmm. you know, if, if it's a little bit easier now, well, I had a great time. Yeah. Why don't we give Spe it another Especially go? if he's new to the area. Was he from here? No, he he was living like an hour away from the city. So he never came to where I was living very frequently. All right. So you could say something like, you know, like, hey, if you're new, especially if, you, if he's new here, you know, like, hey, I know what it's like to be new to a city. I know it like, didn't work out time if you uh, work out last time. But if you want to grab, grab, grab a drink sometime, I would be down. You are potentially setting yourself up for like him trying to friend zone you. So if you do go on a date, 
you have to decide how clear you want him to think it's a date. But that could be a way for you to just kind of get to know him. You know, I wouldn't try to pretend that your intentions aren't to date him, but that is a way to maybe ease yourself back into his life. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I have to wait until the next story comes up, but I will lead with that. (laughs) I think we wait to, yeah, you've waited a year. Wait till he posts something that makes it kind of seem like like you would naturally be curious that you haven't been waiting Mm -hmm. around you know, for for the right post. Well, and it also it it it's You're like so against better that. for you that you have like not set up for success. jumped on the first or second one that he's posted because now it doesn't look like oh the second he tagged the city you're like on it. Yeah, you've seen several and now you're curious. So like really the waiting is benefiting you. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, so w- wait till the right one and just real casual at first and see if he bites at all. If he responds back, there's a curiosity that he has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he could he could easily ignore it. Yeah. That could very likely be what the end result is. <laughs> and and, yeah, and if it does, know. who cares? Yeah. Good for you for shooting your shot. 100%. You, know? you don't even know if he has a girlfriend right now. Well, he's on Hinge. Yeah, I, was gonna, I still saw his profile active, so I thought that was somewhat of a sign. You know, maybe he's got three people he's already talking to. I don't know. All right. Do we have a good plan? I think we have a good plan. All right. Uh, keep us posted. We're dying to find out. We want to know what was the picture, that what was the post that you decided to reply to? Did he reply? Did you end up going out with him? How did it go? Are you in love? Do we do we hate him? These are all things. We're is gonna, there a wedding is in Is there June? a wedding? Yeah. You know, did you find out he's a total douchebag? You know, all the good stuff. All the possibilities <laughs> are endless. Yes, I will keep you guys updated. All right. All right. Take care. Goodbye. All right. Thanks thank right. you. Yeah, bye-bye. She was adorable. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Cutie. All right, Tino. Let's finish this. Let's, yeah, let's that was wrap. a good. That was you a good. Got a feel good, break. good so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. How are you feeling? I'm good. Yeah, that, was, that was sweet. She was nice. She was very nice. Yeah, I hope it works out. All right. Did you uh, hear from Avon after AFR? We're jumping right back into it. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you you want to ask me how to get, Dry. Like, <laughs> You want to warm up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about ask about my day? How it's is your day? Nice. All right. Yeah, it's fun. Mm-hmm. This has been fun. Top favorite movie of all time. Oh man, Grand Budapest Hotel or Fifty First Dates for sure. Interesting. Yeah, one of uh one of the Bachelorette interview questions was like, "Do you have a hidden talent?" And I go, "No." And they're like, "Well, like you know, Todd." He goes, "Come on, you gotta have something." And I said, "Well, I I think I'm better at watching Fifty First Dates than anyone else." And he like everyone laughed, and he goes, "Why?" And I go, "I don't know. I've probably seen it like a hundred times at this point. It never gets old to me." It's Fifty That's First a talent. Dates. Yeah. Do, do you like a hangover? Do you movie. like a good rom com? Yeah, yeah. No, just that one. Just that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As strange as they say. <laughs> did you hear? Did you, have you heard from Avon? Yeah. So Avon. So I don't know if there's any rumor, but uh, Avon's a great dude. Avon's super nice and always straightforward, and he's super accountable. Much like it says in the media, I don't think he knew I was going to be out there when he came out, and he reached out the night of AFR, where I think my phone was off because um, I was getting too many texts. It was overwhelming, but. He texted me that night and just said, Hey, I'm really sorry. Like I, you know, that, that was tough. And then we talked on the phone the next day too. He's a class act dude. I don't, I don't think he was at all trying to, you know, posterize me. I think he just went there with the intention of cheering up Rachel because, you know, I mean, seeing an ex after four weeks when it was a pretty crushing breakup, like understandably would be hard on anybody. Are you still in love with Rachel? Oh, that's a, it's a loaded one. I really, really loved Rachel through the whole process. And like, I, I still think about her every day. It's just like, I, after everything that has transpired and I think I the the best way to put it is I've moved on. I think we were just so not like I I actually really didn't think to ask that, but uh, I think like in in the uh, environment of the show, we really really fell extremely in love, and it it was something beautiful that I haven't experienced like that unique style of love because this is the most unique situation ever. But I think real life plays like a huge role in that. And I I think there is somebody who's just more compatible for her out there. And that that like guts me even two months after the breakup. But yeah, I mean, there's there's like if she ever needed something and needed to call me, like I'd always answer. I'll always care about her and appreciate our time together. And she set the bar really high for my future fiance. And I really like appreciate the hell out of her. But yeah, like I think, you know, it's just time to move on. Yeah, makes sense. If we never got to see you 
let's say after this interview, you disappear into the your private life, and maybe you won't, I don't know. But what would you want uh, my audience or the audience of Bachelor Nation or the world, what would, you, what, are your, what would you want your final thoughts, your lasting impression, what would you want people to think, I guess, not unless they, oh yeah, of you or your intentions or just, you know, what you hope will be the lasting impression people have of you? What's your hope? Well, the whole reason to do this show, it it was like, I, I kind of thought about it and I'm like, okay, because I listened to Nate's and you guys did a phenomenal job. And I remember listening to Nate's and just being like, wow, like I wish, and same with your book too, because like you and Nate, like just were so vulnerable and so human, like it was so relatable. And I think at the time when I made like my mistake and like really hurt Rachel, I just like, I was feeling so embarrassed and so alone. And I would just love it if like somebody, and it doesn't have to be somebody from the show that I wanted to make this is about is like a real authentic relationship as I could. Because I think like, even though this was televised, it was like very similar to a lot of struggles that people have when they are dating somebody new that they like care about a lot, but they don't know like exactly where the other camp is at that point in time. And I just hope like if people listen to this guys or girls and they find themselves in that situation where they are feeling like okay like wh where's this going is this going down like like that anxious that kind of like like i just don't want them to feel like alone or embarrassed like they know that like at least like they're not the only one who's like insecurities get spiked by like somebody else has like some say in your emotions and that's that's really hard for anybody to admit like especially when you're dating like I mean, it was, it was super hard for me to admit. I wish, yeah, like I, I just really wish that, you know, maybe I could have called you or Nate or somebody and you know, like, I, I don't want like a million calls, no, no offense to anybody, but, uh, you know, like, I hope they listen to this show and like, if they are feeling like that kind of insecurity, they're like, okay, I'm not alone. Like, and I hope like they kind of look at like, okay, how did Tino look at this as an opportunity to grow and what's he doing? Mm -hmm. And it, they don't have to do the same thing. Like Nate, Nate's like an incredibly authentic guy and quite beautiful. And very handsome. Yeah. he didn't need the toxic vice that I did, even though like a lot of our struggles were probably pretty similar. Yeah. So it like, it showed me that like, I have a uniqueness to my insecurities and outlets that I need to fix because it hurt it. There's collateral damage. And I just hope like this kind of can start the process for like maybe some other people to just kind of hear it and be like, okay, I'm not alone in feeling insecure when X, Y, and Z happens. How can I fix it? He's trying this. Maybe something else works. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks for uh, reading my book, by the way. It's really good. I appreciate the plug. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I want to get the audio book too, but like, so when I read a hard cover, I like read really slow, but I remember everything, but I like want to kind of like run it back. But like, it just takes so like I had to, I made it a mission to finish your book before this. You finished it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was speed reading at the end it? for sure. Well, not Tell even more, why I like the, uh, the chapters about like when you're in a relationship, those hit a little too close to home. So like I was speed reading through those, but I should listen to, like, I should re-listen to them I appreciate too, because I think it is really authentic, good advice. Is there a world where we could see you at paradise in the future or have you sworn off bachelor nation? I mean, like, I just, I really, I don't like, I mean, we all saw how sweaty I was. So that's, uh, that's. I'd be in a, a tough position there, but um, I, like at least at this moment, I really think like if it, like at least in Bachelor Nation terms, like if it's not Rachel, it's nobody. But you know, like we'll kind of see. I mean, I think it's kind of how I should be. It's only been two months. Yeah, we'll give it time. Yeah, we'll get you down there. I <laughs> wouldn't, I wouldn't bet money on that changing, yeah. but I, I, that makes sense. Uh, Tino, you've been um, really generous uh, with your time. We appreciate you coming on and sharing everything. It's not easy to own up to what you've owned up and talk about your vulnerabilities. So I, I, I thank you. All we can do is uh, recognize our mistakes and try to learn and be better for it. It seems like you're on that path and I wish you nothing but the best uh, along that journey. And uh, I really appreciate your transparency. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I mean, I, I hope like, you know, people who unfortunately have made like a mistake like me, like don't think they're doomed to that fate or that yeah you know like i am this now because i had a low character moment doesn't mean like i i certainly believe it doesn't mean you're you're doomed to low character forever no yeah, i would agree want to go ahead and um plug your uh, charity uh every year in at the end of october there's a fundraiser for camp ronald mcdonald Camp Ronald McDonald is a charity that's really close for me personally. I was a camper there. It is an organization that helps 
families by giving them emotional support who has a kid that has cancer. So when a family has a kid that has cancer, it affects not just the kid, but the siblings too. So what the organization does is they provide a cost-free summer camp where you have like a community, a new family that kind of understands this really unique position you're in. So every year we do a Heroes for Healing fundraiser. It's a six week kind of blitz fundraiser. And the goal is just to raise as much money as you can to help camp be cost free to all the families that are unfortunately involved in the uh, you know childhood cancer sphere. Um, so I did it three years ago. My My team raised a good amount of money. You can see it on my Instagram, but this year they're they're really pushing hard to raise some money. And you know, Nick Nick was nice enough to let me spread the awareness. And they're I'm I'm hoping I'll post a link if, if we'll, we can uh, we'll put, put it in our show okay, notes cool. too. So if you guys yeah. want to donate to this uh, foundation, go go to our show notes and there'll be a link to uh, support this co- good cause. Yeah, and I mean any little bit adds up so fast. I mean when I did it years ago, I probably had like 600 followers on Instagram, and we really made a, like a big a big uh rush at it you know we raised a lot of money and it was because of it wasn't because of like big donations of five hundred dollars all the time i mean there were a lot like the twenty dollar the ten dollars like add up really fast so it's a great opportunity for you know anybody who wants to kind of give to a really deserving community all right well you heard him go uh go find that link uh donate we appreciate it. like tino said every little bit helps again tino thank you for your time i wish you nothing but the best it sounds like you are someone who's been to therapy and i commend you for it uh, and i hope you continue on that path and i appreciate your honesty i wish you nothing but the best and i hope that uh, like you said i hope Anyone listening will maybe have learned something from your vulnerability and your mistakes, and maybe, you know, there'll be one or two people out there better for it. Yeah, hopefully. Well, guys, thanks for listening. We appreciate you listening. All, as always, don't forget to uh, rate, review, all that fun stuff. Send your questions <laughs> at asknick at castme.com, cast with a K. Also, there's a special update episode that we dropped last Friday. If you haven't listened to that, tune in. So go back. All, all your Ask Nick and texting office hours update. Well, not all, some of them. Uh, we'll, we'll have more coming out. Don't forget my book is out USA Today bestseller. <sighs> yeah. Uh, really again, I can't thank you enough for all the, uh, the kind words, the reviews. Uh, it's probably the thing I'm most proud of in my life. I've decided. Yeah. It's, it's the one thing I never thought I could do that I did. And it turned out people like it. So I'm proud, but it's available. Uh, there's an audio book. I, if you get the audio book, I recommend it. You listen to it on point nine speed. I, I got it for the first time. I, I, I was like, what does my audiobook sound like? So I got it. And I was like, I definitely was choppy the first couple chapters. I'm dyslexic. So I feel like I, was, I felt like I could hear that. Uh, it's smoothed out. But I feel like it's, it sounds better at 0.9, not 1.0. I'm curious your thoughts. You heard it here me. first. But also the book, the hard copy. It's cute. It's fun. It serves as a great uh, guide to reference back to. It's a great gift. Any friend that you have struggling in relationships or dating or anything who's just like feels confused, get him this book. I really appreciate all the support people have given to it. So please go check it out. We are back on Monday, right? We always are. For another great week. (laughs) Tino, thanks so much, man. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick for your favorite relationship stories and advice, and our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps. See you next time.